Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In the last video, we had learnt about the chronic venous congestion of lung, right? So, in this video, in continuation with the chronic venous congestion topic, let's learn about chronic venous congestion of liver and spleen. So, we will be understanding the pathogenesis, the gross and microscopic features of both chronic venous congestion, liver and spleen. So, this is what we saw in the earlier uh, video, right? So, we looked into uh, the various causes of left heart failure, which leads to pulmonary venous congestion and thereby chronic venous congestion of lung, right? Similarly, whenever uh, you have a right heart failure and that Pressure is transmitted upstream of the right heart which leads to systemic venous congestion leading on to chronic venous congestion of the liver, spleen and kidney. So, let's look into chronic venous congestion of liver now. So, we all know that the hepatic veins empty into the vena cava immediately inferior to the heart right? and thus liver is very vulnerable to both acute and chronic passive congestion. So, whenever there is right heart failure, this increased pressure, you know, in the central vein is directly transmitted to the sinusoids and thereby resulting in dilatation of sinusoids. So, let's understand this by uh, this simple illustration. So, this is your central vein, right? So, whenever there is congestion, whenever there is increased pressure in this central vein, obviously, the pressure is transmitted into the hepatic sinusoids and then there will be dilatation of hepatic sinusoids. So, once there is dilatation and congestion of hepatic sinusoids, there will be pressure atrophy of all these hepatocytes, particularly in the centrilobular zone. Whereas, the mid-zone hepatocytes, it may show fatty change and that's because of relative hypoxia and the peripheral zone of the hepatic lobules are relatively spared. So, this is basically the pathogenesis and even the findings in tonic venous condition of the liver. So, in long-standing cases, what really happens is that there will be thickening of the central vein, there will be sinusoidal thrombosis and the strain promote fibrosis which in extreme cases, particularly in cases of uh, conditions like constrictive pericardial disease or tricuspid stenosis where there will be extreme right heart failure, right? Extreme pressure transmitted into the central vein leading on to uh, lots of fibrosis and finally, this fibrosis becomes generalized throughout the liver and resulting in cirrhosis and this type of cirrhosis is called as cardiac cirrhosis. The name cardiac cirrhosis is basically because this cirrhosis, the origin of this cirrhosis is basically due to the cardiac failure, particularly the right-sided cardiac failure. Now, you understood, right? We have earlier studied that alcoholism is the most common cause of cirrhosis, right? Now, we also looked into the cardiac cause of cirrhosis and then hence, this is cardiac cirrhosis. Now, I am sure you all know that this is a nutmeg. Why are we looking at nutmeg? That's because the cut section of the chronic venous congestion liver where you find dark spots and the paler spots. The dark spots are the ones which are areas representing the dilated and congested hepatic venules whereas the paler parts which are the normal areas around these congested venules. Okay, And this cut section is reminiscent of the cut section of nutmeg and hence this is also referred to as nutmeg liver. Okay, nutmeg liver basically it tells you that there is congestion in the center and then periphery appears normal. Another illustration showing very characteristic nutmeg appearance. So, that's a formalin fixed specimen showing a nutmeg appearance wherein the dark spots are basically dilated and congested hepatic venules, whereas the paler areas are normal looking areas or normal hepatocytes. Microscopically, as we have uh, studied earlier, there will be central vein which is dilated and congested and that resulting in central hemorrhagic necrosis, right? The hemorrhagic necrosis is particularly more so around the centri, uh, in within the central lobular zone around the central veins and you can find fatty change in the mid-zonal hepatocytes, peripheral zones as we all know it will be relatively normal and that's the portal triad. So, this is the characteristic microscopic feature of chronic venous congestion of liver. Now, moving on to understanding another important organ affected by uh, right heart failure and systemic venous congestion that is chronic venous congestion of the spleen. Now, the most, the most common causes of uh, CVC spleen is right heart failure and of course, portal hypertension where 
there will be increased intravascular pressure in the liver and that increased intravascular pressure in the liver we saw that's because of right heart failure and second cause could be portal hypertension it could be intrahepatic obstruction also and that leads to increased pressure in the splenic vein okay so more pressure is transmitted via the portal vein into the splenic vein thereby leading to congestion of the spleen in long standing cases just like what we saw in cvc liver there will be fibrosis throughout the spleen that's diffuse splenic fibrosis sometimes you do find you know iron containing fibrotic and calcified foci of old hemorrhages and that's classically known as gamma gandhi bodies we will look into what these are a bit later grossly the spleen is enlarged it's firm and tense the capsule is very much thickened that surface you know it oozes dark blood microscopically this is an illustration of uh, cvc spleen microscopy where you can see that the capsule is thickened and even the trabeculae are thickened okay thickened capsule and trabeculae mm -hmm. you can easily make out that there is congestion in the red pulp okay so these are the contents of the white pulp and the red pulp basically are the splenic sinusoids which are congested you see old hemorrhage along with fibrosis which are impregnated with iron pigment and calcium salts and these are as i told you they are gamma gandhi bodies are gandhi gamma bodies so what are these bodies these are basically small firm spheroidal or irregular foci which are yellow brown brown or even rusted color they consist relatively dense fibrous tissue with collagenous fibers which are impregnated with iron pigment and calcium salts how are they formed they result from organization and scarring of sites where small perivascular hemorrhages would have occurred and these are gandhi gamma bodies another very good you know uh, microscopic photograph of gandhi gamma body this is another uh, classical appearance of gamma gandhi body and that's a special stain for iron pearl stain demonstrating diffuse deposition of iron in these gamma gandhi bodies note that these gamma gandhi bodies are not specific for chronic venous congestion of the spleen alone they can also be seen in sickle cell anemia they can also be seen in hemochromatosis they can also be seen in other organs like in case of various cancers or various tumors like renal cell carcinoma liver carcinoma pituitary adenoma certain forms of lymphomas etc okay for your understanding just note that in chronic venous congestion you can find gamma gandhi bodies but it is not specific to cvc spleen alone right so that's all about uh, cvc spleen and liver we did understand the pathogenesis the gross and microscopic features of both these entities right cvc liver and spleen so thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe because i'll be coming out with many more such small interesting videos if you find this video useful please do share thank you